are, is all the kids that you were in school with parents like think the way we think? Hell no. no. None of them do. Does the teachers think the way we think? So you're you're Obviously being for, not. you're being forced to socialize with people that you don't want to be with. It's basic. You know. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you. I ain't never so let me break, 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 break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. Welcome to Breaking the Cycle podcast episode number two. Today is part two of 17 things your kids are dying or your kids are dying to know about their parents. Last week we did the first three questions and our father has no clue what the questions are and we're going to be asking him the rest of the 14 questions throughout this series. Breaking the Cycle is live show on how to be a positive role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would want to marry. These are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves so when they eventually and they will be are confronted with these life situations they are not in shock and will have an idea on how to approach it all right so last week on episode number one is if you didn't watch that you probably should go watch that before this one you don't necessarily have to but it gives you a quick reintroduction to us and to the show and we go over a couple of questions i think we did the first only got to three questions because those three questions led to follow-up questions so these these 17 questions are going to take for as many episodes as it takes with other stuff sprinkled in. So it may take three or four episodes. We'll see how many more of these questions we get to today. They have 17 total. And then there's follow-up questions to those. So we'll see how it goes. And I'll tell you what, I said it last week. I do a lot of speaking, a lot of coaching in front of a lot of people. And this, this episode, these episodes that we're doing here, and we've done a lot of we've done a lot of live shows together, but these questions that you're coming up with, putting me on the spot. It's making me sweat a little bit. I should have put my deodorant on. I'm dripping sweat here. Nervous in what you're, you're going to come up with. So hope you got some good questions today. We got good ones today. You the starting joke. Oh, gosh. What do we got? What do you call a sad berry? I can't hear you. What do you, you call? You got to speak up, man. The mic's over here. What do you, you call? You got to stop bumping that mic. What do you call a sad berry? It could be any berry. Any berry. Strawberry. Say the question again, what? but less squeakish, please. What do you call a sad strawberry? Now I can't tell what the <laughs> F you're saying. What do you call a sad strawberry? What do you call... Hold on. I gotta make sure I got the question right before you start counting. What do you call a sad strawberry? Alright. Sad strawberry. Stop making noise. Sour no, apple? Sour grape? I don't know. Sad strawberry. Sour? Is sour in there? No. No? Nothing? It's not very good. Sweet? Sour? Sad? Bum, bum, bum. Crushed berry? Mixed berry? This Squished is, berry? So Give me a hint. Is this figure outable? Listen, uh, well, listen, really, these things, well, these, listen, these things have to be figure outable. Okay, they can't be like so it's weird that not. It's kind of okay, like, give like me a hint. under the weather. Tyson, you know? I, Alright, give me a like, hint. Tyson, I, I need to save the hint. No, you don't. Doesn't matter. What color? What color do you feel? What what what's? What's the word that's a color that means sad? Blueberry. Yeah, you get a half a point. It's. I got a half. Point. It's something like Eugene that would is, say in Walking Dead. It is actually figure outable, so I'll, I'll give it. It's so, something like Eugene. So I got point five out of one because I got the answer with and a hint. And I also have my super awesome, cool track sheet, so I can keep track too. All right, so let's let, let's go. Well, before we go to questions, I, I can't. I was reading this book. Or not read one was reading a book and one was listening to a podcast and I just all these different statistics. And this is about breaking a cycle. And and before this episode, we had a one-on-one meeting. We were coming up with our song that's gonna be in the intro 
to these to this podcast because we didn't even release it yet and we had a song and we don't know if it's copyrighted so we're seeing what we could do to get the rights to be able to use that song and the in the intro we'll see what happens but i don't remember the point of what i was saying what were we talking about the song for the intro of this no but even before that why would i even bring that up i don't know I oh so it was oh so this is about Breaking the Cycle, and the song we were talking about, the, you hear the lyrics, and we actually were researching it and seeing about it, and it's about breaking the cycle of, of bad, a bad life, bad relationship, bad environments, bad whatever, um, and do you know that, actually Tyson is one of these, 40%, holy shit, I kind of didn't realize that, filling my whole, whole, the whole percentages, but they're not in this country, so we're talking about the United States, they're from Russia. No, they are. So, 40% of kids are born into single family homes. Out of those single family homes, 80% of those single family homes, who do you think they're with? By themselves. No, which parent? Mom. They're with the mother. So 40% of kids, so four out of every 10 kids are born into single family home. Mommy. Out of those, she was, your mother was, and was with her mother. So she, she fits right in there. Your mother was born into a single family home and lived with only her mother. So that's a perfect well, example right there. She wasn't. She was born, but since she was born, uh, um, her father left because she was born. Jesus, no, he was gone before she was even born. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I heard some yeah. other stuff. While he was waiting for her to be born, he was just gone. So, so she fits him right there. Perfect, perfect example. So, forty percent. So, four out of every ten are born into a single family. So, out of those four, eighty percent. So, more than three out of four. So, like eight out of ten of those are just only with their mother. Jeez. Now, wait on, that's not done yet. Now, there's 51% divorce rate in this country. 51%. That's more than half. More than half. It's like slightly more than half. So now, those six that were born into a married family, you get it? Like not a single uh -huh. family. Out of those six, three, more than three out of those six, now add to that, join that group of four. You get it? You following me? Because now they're it's going a into a confusing, but I think no. Because so. now if they're divorced, now they're going into single family Wait, so homes. They're going into an unmarried home. You get it? Oh. So now that four from the first four that were born that way, three out of the six ended up there from divorce. So seven out of ten are in a single family home. If you think about it. And how many? Are and eighty percent probably. When you go to that, probably I'd say even more than eighty percent. If eighty percent are born into it, it's probably around eighty percent also, but probably even more usually. Usually the bad guy gets would get screwed in that situation. The bad guy always gets screwed. But the bad guy's still married in Yeah, this I'm case. just saying in general. They were the bad the, the like if you hear like whatever, we need to get into all that yes. stuff. But that's pretty crazy. Bad guy. I just thought of it because I was hearing all these different statistics, but that's pretty nuts. So seven out of ten kids are nice. are, are like that. So oh. this is why we have this show. And that, that's th with that song made me think of it. Like this is why we have that show, and that song is all about it. I'm not gonna say what the song is because if we don't be able to put it onto this as the thing, we'll be pissed off. Maybe we'll put it on anyway, see what happens. Or maybe we'll get rights to it. I'll say we'll send an email to the company that distributed the song and tell them why we want to use it, what we want to use it for, and maybe they'll give it allow, allow us to use it. See what happens. Just like the store. We couldn't get into the store at that time. I called the owner of the store. Oh yeah. Sassy Lassies. And all of a sudden the owner comes and opens up the store for us just because we came all the way from wherever we came from just to buy some. We drove toys. halfway across the country to go to the store. To go to the weapon we store. We may have tweaked it just a tad just a tad all right so let's get into the let's get into the interview i'm on the hot seat here yes can i do the first one ah oh, sure man. i guess so what was the these are harder than the riddles you guys give these questions question number four right it's question number four yes. we did question, three question number i think we only did three last week right mm -hmm. all right yes. so what do we got what's question number what four? was the first you gotta speak loud and clear man what was the first what was the first brand and model? What, what was the brand and model of the first phone you ever got? First phone? Oh, when you were saying that, I thought you were going to say car. Did you want to know that too? Yeah. So look at that. See how sometimes one question leads to another? Because there's a good that, story. That should be another question though. There's a good story about it's the car. Fine. Okay. Right? So then whatever. It, even though it's called 17 questions. questions, it's going to end up being like 57 questions. <laughs> so phone. The brand, I could not even tell you if I tried, but it was not until 1998. So I was 20 years old. It was Nokia. About to turn 20. I was thinking Nokia. That's funny. But I don't think it was. It was this weird. I probably have it. Everyone makes fun of Nokia's. My great grandma has a Nokia. It was a flat 
It was before, it was before even the flip, there was not even a flip phone yet. What? It was like a straight, it was actually almost a, like a look of a smartphone, it was just flat, like a rectangular oh, flat one. So it was actually, it came, it's more like to what these are, but it had just buttons on it, no touch screen. Oh, those phones? And you know like a calculator? You know a calculator, how the numbers look just like those digital numbers? That's, That's all it was on there. Yeah. But this was the first, this was like mind blowing because you could actually go on to check your email on there. Like to be able to oh, check your type? email and your you phone. Yes. Say you want it, like each number, it only had numbers, there was no letters. Like the number one was A, B, C. The number two how would you even type was D, E, F. When you're on the computer, you have to hit let your typing as letters, like hit the letter button, and then on one, if you wanted B, you'd have to hit one one until it stopped on B, and you had to wait for it to register that B. Then if you wanted E, you'd have to go to number two since it was D E F. And I hit, always hit number to... two twice. Like look, I... you had to hit just to get one letter. You had to hit two twice. Then E would pop up. You had to wait for it to pause, and then click in the E for every letter like that to write I... an email. But what if... I always wondered why but it was what if always you... like that on the I know that there's. I know oh that there's my usually God. no two B's in a row in like a, in like a word or something, but what if you wanted two B's in a row, let's say? You'd have to wait for it to sink in. It would like pop on the screen and then register. And then you, have then to you just have to do it again. It, it is freaking weird. And it was when I just got to San Diego, just finished a year in Japan in the Marines. I just got to San Diego and I was there not too long and it was cell phones were just starting coming out. It was one of the, first, one of the only people that I know that had a cell phone because I just wanted one and I could check stocks on there because I was investing in the stock market already back then. I was putting money into like different stocks that I got like every two weeks to get paid in the Marine Corps. So I took $75 out of every paycheck and automatically had it taken out of my paycheck and sent into this mutual fund. And in like two years, two and a half years, when I got out, I had like 14 or it was, I was up to 20,000, but I spent some of it when I came out. I had like 15, $16,000 saved up coming out of the Marines just from the stock market. Because back then, did you get more out of what you, you invested in? money? Hell yeah, putting seventy five dollars every two weeks for a couple of years, and that just kept. Because then the stock started growing. Back then, the stock market was killing it, and before like the years like two thousand two thousand one, stock market like when all the to all these tech companies, Wait, so like 50, internet was just starting. So anyone who came out with a good product on the internet or an app or a website, shit would blow up because it was so new and so so successful. Now the stock market is trash. I don't even want to tell you what's going on in the stock market now. With with our stocks, but then encourage somebody who do you any, do you know any like tech person or some somebody who works with tech? Encourage them to create. Oh, if you if you would meet somebody like that, encourage them to create a new phone a phone business or something, so then you can invest in it. You it's just like did you just I was consider really... you just consider you going over there, sir? No, I saw listen. <laughs> yawn. People have I, people have died, died for less. less. Exactly. I'm fucking yawn on this show. Yes, sir. Something All right, tell about. us about the car. So the car, six, 16, uh, senior in Mustang? high school. Was it a Mustang? Ford Mustang. Senior. Knew it. You're going to eat your hands on this show? Senior in high school, my mother, my mother, you know, your grandmother, now you just know her as your grandmother, she drove a 1988 Ford Mustang, this two-door Mustang. That was her car. She drove it. And be well, actually before that, my father had a car and he was always drunk. He would drive me to work drunk. I'd worked in a department store that I used to sort of steal stuff from all the time. But I worked in a department store. He would drive me to the department store drunk all the time. So I finally got my driver's license. I failed my test on my driver's license the first time. And back then, you had to wait like two, three, four months to retest it again. I was so pissed. This person failed me for my driver's license test and they left me in the middle of the road in the car and I couldn't even drive. He jumped out of the car because he was so pissed because I was arguing with the guy. And he jumped out of the car and left me sitting in the car for the test in the middle of the road. And like the driving instructor had to run and come up. Another instructor had to come right up and drive it off. I'm not allowed to drive it because I failed the license test because I was arguing with him. Because I thought I was doing the right thing, but apparently not. And he got so pissed off and he just jumped out of the car and left me there. And I failed. So I had to retake the test a couple like several months later, back then you'd have to wait so long to retake the test. Nowadays you wait like a week or two, I think. So I had to retake the whole test several months later, get my driver's license. I'm sick of my drunk father bringing me to work and complaining and bitching when he would do times he would drive me to work, which usually I had to take either a bus. I've had to ride my bike there sometimes. I had to walk sometimes. It was over three miles that I'd walk there, but sometimes he would drive me. So I got my license. So I asked him to borrow his car. This is a week after I got my license, less than a week, like a few days after I just got my driver's license. I borrow his car, 
about a mile, mile and a half from the house. I'm in New Jersey now because we lived on the right on the border of New Jersey. I'm at a stop sign. Oh no. There's a car coming towards me like from my left, but I'm at a stop sign. He puts his right blinker on, meaning he's gonna turn on my street. I see the blinker and so I go and turn left. He didn't have, he has, just forgot he had his blinker on, I guess, and wasn't turning. Bam, head on collision, totaled my father's car like two days after, three days after I got my driver's license. Wait, so that was your father's car? Not the Mustang. This is before the Mustang. I was just telling you about that one. So, total. Wait, so that was your dad's car that you crashed? Yeah. Total this I car. I thought it was your Ford Mustang that you no, crashed. No, that one also crashed eventually in the ice storm. I know. In the ice yeah. storm. Yeah. So, the, that was that. That was the day after the driver's license. Then he, I didn't know how to drive stick shift then, and I really don't embarrassingly know how to drive stick shift. I've started thinking about it now that we're saying it. That's like something a man and a, anyone should know how to drive a stick shift. You know, like manual transmission. You don't even know what it is. I do. There are cars where you have to change the gears yourself. They don't change on their own. And if you don't, what and do there's three change? pedals instead of two. What's yeah. the third one? For it's the clutch to change the gears. Like race cars have them and stuff. And and so older for like drifting older stuff? cars have just had to transmission. It's just the way wait, it drives. Wait, what do you mean like gears like two wheel? No, two -wheel one, drive? two, three, four to drive from ten miles an hour to twenty. And you're in your car when you're driving. It goes. Yeah. Each one of those is a different gear. You have to do those manually on your own. And know where the numbers are. So it's like you an, go faster. It's like the shape of an H. No, it's just it's just a different type of car. So I, I didn't know how to drive that kind of car. So his next, all his cars from that point he bought were stick shift because I didn't know how to drive. So I can never borrow his car again. He purposely bought them so I can never use his car or drive his car ever again. Yeah, and, we definitely got to learn that. And I never learned how to drive it. That is embarrassing. So there's our lesson here: is we're going to learn how to drive stick shift together. Look at that. We're going to learn together. I have no clue how to drive a stick shift. That is pathetic. I am. I don't know how to drive a car. So. I do. You do be decent with all the video games you played. So yeah. that leads me to That's then a, six, a year later, um, I'm in a 12th grade and <laughs> my mother has a Ford Mustang. I want, I need a car. So of course my parents aren't just giving me anything. I had to buy the car from him for $3,500. I had to save up my mm -hmm. money from my father. I had to give him money for her old used beat up 1988 Ford Mustang. And oh, oh, wait, what year was it? This was 1995. So it was seven years old. So, yeah, it wasn't that old. Like seven years, not that bad. I had a lot of miles. I had like over 100,000 miles on it already. Yeah, so I had to give him $3,500 for it. And that was my first car, 1988 Ford Mustang. That was my mother's seven that I years. bought from him that my father wouldn't even give me. And didn't even give me a deal, like a good deal on it. At that point, 35,000? 35,000. Oh, thousand. Where the hell did I get thirty-five thousand? You said thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five hundred. Oh, I'll but even that at that point, a used car, thirty-five hundred was it was. The, maybe the years wrong. I'm pretty sure it was a nineteen eighty-eight. Unless it was nineteen eighty-six. Pretty sure it was nineteen eighty-eight Ford Mustang. It was like navy blue, which eventually, like, I had it for a couple years. I was gonna say if it was thirty-six thousand dollars. That's. No, hell no. Where the hell did I get off. that money from? I had to save money for months to get thirty-five hundred. I was making five. My, I was working at the store I was working at that I needed the ride from that I crashed the car. Now I was making money per hour? 55 cents? 55, I wasn't born in 1908. 55 cents, $5.05, 5 dollars and 5 cents. 505 an hour. I was close. And then you pay taxes on that. So my first week, I, would only allow, I, was, I was only 16, so I was only allowed to work 20 hours a week. So I figured I'm gonna get $200. 505, 5 dollars and 5 cents an hour for 20 hours. I'm waiting to get my $200 check for the week. I get it. It's like 117 or 120 something dollars. I freak out. I'm like, what the hell? I worked all these hours. They're like, hey, dipshit. There's this thing called taxes. They take the taxes out of your paycheck. You don't make the money that you're making. They take like 30 to 40 percent out of your freaking paycheck. That's messed up. Some or 25, 30, depending on what your situation is, whatever. So that was the first. Oh, that was my first job, official, other than like. Hold on, I. That was the first car, and that was the first phone. Phone. So we just attacked a lot of questions right there. I don't believe that. What was your first job? A question? No, so, it was not. So all right, that well, that was the good. first official job, like on the books, like paid where you're paying taxes. I had no, other stuff where I would steal stuff. I would steal stuff and sell it. Actually, that, that store that I worked for, I was stealing stuff from that store for a couple of years before. Anyway, besides that. Yeah. Uh, tell the that chocolate story. Huh? The chocolate story. That is actually one of the questions that we're going to do all right, in let's later go. episodes. What do we got next? Let's keep all it rolling. All right. Keep it rolling. Huh. What was the first video game you played? The first video game. If 
So you know that I have five brothers and sisters. I'm yes. the youngest and we're 10 years apart. So there's six of us all within 10 years. So basically my mother, your grandma was pregnant for like 10 years straight basically. Six kids in 10 years. <laughs> Think about it, you're pregnant for each one for nine months. So six of us within 10 years of each other. We, uh, nin Nintendo, not Super Nintendo, not Nintendo 64, nothing else, not GameCube or GameCast or any of that stuff. Just Nintendo was called, was our first one. We didn't get Atari, the one before that was Atari. Was like was just literally a joystick with like one button, a joystick. You do like Pac Man. Do, 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 like okay. literally, it's like pixels and dots which you would play with. That's but the first game, Super, what Eugene Super Mario at, Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. Like what Eugene played at the sanctuary. Yeah, exactly. Super Mario Brothers, but on Nintendo. And my brother worked at that same store that I eventually worked at years later. He worked there as security. Surprisingly, so I learned the whole security system. I knew where all the cameras were facing. I knew where I can hide and where I could steal stuff from. When I started working there, when he quit, I worked there. He told you everything? No, I would hang out there in the security room with all the cameras and the whole plane. He worked in security. Oh. I'm like a kid, like, oh, got it. Hmm. Planning a heist. So he, we, he got all, he, I don't know if I paid anything into it. Maybe I, I know all six of us had to chip in. It was $120. For Nintendo, and it came with Super Mario Brothers and a game called Track and Field and Duck Hunt. And it had a gun actually, it was attached to a wire. You shoot these ducks in the sky and they Did fall you down. Did you throw it out? No, we actually kept that gun. I actually had that. Maybe she didn't even know if she even knew about that. And then a game called Track and Field. There was a pad that you step on on the floor and has like these sensors. So, say you're doing hurdles, there's two dots for your left foot and your right foot, and you run as fast as you can. Pretty cool for way back then. You literally run, and your little pixel character on the screen runs, and say there's a hurdle, you have to jump in the air because your feet are off the mat, and then land back down, and your character would jump over the hurdle. It was like pretty advanced for the time, but you're just like a pixel. But then, That's cool, I wanna try it. But then the thing died out, it's called the Power Pad, and they never made any games for it again after that, which was so, it was like all these different events in there Aww. on the Power Pad, and you'd get tired. You'd be like running, like on your feet. You'd be like dripping sweat. It was pretty cool. That was your workout? For back in the day. Remember the last episode you said Pissy Mattress was your workout boxing? Yeah, but boxing. That also, Pissy Mattress, that the spring sticking workout, out. right? Yeah, so then Nintendo, the best game I ever had Nintendo. Yeah, Yawn Again, boy, and we are fist oh, fighting. Shoot. I see a Yawn Track Again, kid, field we field are fist fine. fighting. That's how I focus. Track and, you can still, I bet you can go to a, a, like a GameStop and get old yes. school Nintendos at for like 20 the, bucks and you could get games at the, At one of the malls that we were at, there at like was a retro like this, store, right? All this like yeah, retro games. Yeah, there was like PlayStation 2s. Oh, I there remember was, that. PlayStation 2 was like, I got that when I came out of the Marine Corps. That is not old. I mean, it's there old, There's some but. old Nintendos. There was this huge blocky screen. So there was like this huge block screen. And then there was like a some stuff. Was that was that I don't know what it was. Was that the I think it was, the, was that the GameStop across from Mommy's facial place in that Yes. Mall? It was facial I remember place. That. So the, listen, so then the, here's where the game video game stuff gets a little funny, something and when we do we do these LTDs, leadership and team development, you know, when I'm traveling around and, and I mm -hmm. go to companies, speak to their teams. I have them go around the room and they talk about their strengths and weaknesses, but also they tell a quick short thing or story about themselves that no one probably ever know, in the room doesn't know about them so they can get to know each other better. And I always start because leaders start and you lead by example. So I would go first and I tell them this story that I'm about to tell you about video games. When I was a kid, there was a game came out called Baseball Stars. It was still Nintendo, regular Nintendo, but it was like the next level game. Like after, you know, after each generation of games come out every couple of years, like enhance it, they learn the technology a little better. So it was like, they had a built-in battery inside the cartridge that you could play a cartridge season. What? Cartridge the game was a cartridge. The game was this oh. big. It's like big plastic cartridge you had to stick in and it would never work. And you had to like blow on it or else it wouldn't work. It would stop working, it would freeze. It's a big ass cartridge. But this was the first game that had a battery inside the cartridge so you could save your progress. None of these games you could ever save your progress. So if you turn it off. You're it starting over from the beginning. I actually beat Super Mario Bros. one time in one life without dying. All the way to the end. You beat King Bowser, oh. you saved the princess. Did that shit in one life without in dying. In one take, right? You had to. You, you could pause it, I guess, and keep it on, but it would probably freeze because the thing would always like get dirt and Over dust heat? in it. So this was like a, our PlayStation 4, that thing needs to be clean for Even sure. the PlayStation 5 freaking pauses and freezes on it for some reason. So anyway, baseball That's stars. Baseball Stars had a battery built in, so you could play a full season and it kept track of your stats, which each player, how many home runs they hit, how many hits they had, <gasps> everything. First time a game could actually save your progress. I was afraid like the battery would die. So sometimes you'd be like 15 games to a season, 30 games in a season, and the battery would like freeze and get wonky and restart your progress. So I wanted to see what I could do in a full season. I played a 
full season overnight. I didn't go to sleep. Played straight through the night. The next day, I'm playing and there was a rainstorm outside. I started seeing flashing lightning reflecting off the window right near the wall next to the PlayStation, or at least I was convincing myself. I played so long and didn't turn it off that the outlet where it's plugged in started sparking and it made a fire in our wall. We had to call the fire department. They had to come with all the trucks and everything, evacuate our house. And you know when there's a fire, all the neighbors come out. So I come out of the house with the firemen and there's like 50 of the neighbors sitting there because I played video games too long, overheated and it started a fire in our wall. They had to ax a hole in our wall to like put the fire out and like kill all the plugs in there and kill all the wiring in there until we were allowed to back in the house. So the And my parents weren't even home. Because my father was at, at, at the, literally never came home to like late at night and no clue what even happened. And then my brother was so pissed and they almost got in like a fist fight because my father was like drunk at the bar, like a whole thing going on about it later Wait, that day. So that I never knew about. You said it ruined all, oh my God. You said it ruined all the wires. So after that singular season, that the only season that you finished. That whole outlet still doesn't work to this day on that wall. They're, they never fix it? Probably the hole is still there. Where they axed it with the axe. Unless they fixed it. Was it in front of the TV? Yeah, so I had to only use outlets on different parts of the room then. That whole wall, they killed the whole electricity on that whole wall. And we never got it fixed. There was a big hole like this I big. I played a lot of video games, there. but never once. Joke. In the RV, in the RV one time, I was I was playing on this tiny, on this small screen, 36 inch is ish. And then, remember how it just shut off randomly? And then I went to go touch it and it was like boiling hot. So think, you two want a cell phone. I'm thinking of the question you asked already. I kind of already have a phone. You two want a phone. That's just, you use it just Mommy said I'm getting a phone when I'm 16. <laughs> Even that. I was already in the Marines for over a year and a half. Living on my own, basically. You didn't even know phones I, were coming. When I finally got a phone. My first phone. 20 years old. Almost 21. And you and little shits nowadays, seven, eight years old, want their damn phones and they can call know, ten years kid, old. Like you were the only friends. kid in your class, Bobby. You were the only kids in your school when you went when you used to go yeah, to school that didn't have phones. Had phones. And all they do is yeah. bury their face in their phones. They don't know how to it's talk so anymore. They don't know how to have a conversation with anyone anymore. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to like interact with humans or so actually socialize. And then they say, when you start a homeschooling, you know what the first thing everyone always asks about your, you guys when I tell them we're homeschooling, mm -hmm. even though we call it home educating, home lifing, whatever, we don't even call it homeschooling. Because we're not make schooling. It, just make it easy. So you understand what we're talking about, we'll say homeschooling. You know what the first thing people say about it? And everyone says, and you even did it. We had a visitor to our house one day, Shirley and his son, who's his son's been homeschooling. You asked him how long you've been homeschooling for, and he said, my whole life. What grade are you in? No. And he, you mentioned it with him. You guys had a conversation about it, maybe because it brought up. But you know what the, everything, every time I say we're homeschooling, the number one concern everyone always has, what do you think it is? Screens? No. Socializing? Socializing. Well, what do they do about socializing? What if they socialize the same, the way I'll teach them to socialize, a real world socializing, not being stuck in a classroom with kids who are zombies, who some of them are, are not even like they're, are, is all the kids that you were in school with, parents like think the way we think? Hell no. No, none of them do. Does the teachers think the way we think? So you're, you're, being, for, not. you're being forced to socialize. With people that you don't want to be with. It's basically, until, until I mean, I'm sure a couple kids you were friends yeah, with yeah, and this and that, yeah, but yeah. in general, you're stuck in a box with 30 other kids and that's supposed to be, so they say, how do you socialize? I'm like, shit, we broke free from that, like, forced socialization there so we could, so, who, how do you socialize? Do you ever have a conversation with an adult? Yes. Do, like, when we went for... Right 20, 24 hour challenge. You have a conversation yeah. with an adult? Yes. When we went for the walk that time, the overnight walk, the oh, suck yeah. fest walk, do you have a conversation with adults? Yes. I remember even back at one of our Halloween parties in New York at the gym, I had a conversation with some guy. <laughs> I didn't even know who he was. He was just dressed in a hockey costume and we were playing with balloons together. But like we were walking, I remember, I'm asking because I already know the answer. We were doing that walk overnight with Bedros and you were having just as many conversations with other adults. Like, with Ernie, with Christian. Exactly. So socializing doesn't mean you have to only be allowed to speak and be on the same mental wavelength with kids your own age. It doesn't even make sense. Like you're only allowed to talk to other kids your exact age that you don't even have the same beliefs as. Like socializing, why can't you talk to a, a girl or a friend that's three years older than you? Like, most most you of her friends are. Most of your friends are older than you. All you have of now. my friends are older and taller than me. <laughs> well, everyone's taller than you, Midge. You're gonna be taller than all of us soon. I bet I'm gonna have to look like this and call you Mitch. So I feel like that's always the first thing Mitch? people say. Ow. 
know. That's the first thing people but, always ask is socializing. What do you do about socializing? And, and, and like, oh, we thing, socialize awesome because now we're not forced to socialize this bullshit way in school. And, this, and this, all this came from video games. What was the first video game you played? All but that's this, the whole point of this. This is like, triggers a chain reaction. Ex exactly. That's the point of ask having these conversations with your kids and having your kids come up with these questions. Look what it leads to. Look at the stories that come in my head, burning down a house and the car <laughs> and the thinking about your first phone. When they were asking it, I'm soaking in the question. I thought they were about to say ask for the first car. So I was about to tell that story about crashing my father's car, crashing my own car, buying the Ford Mustang and all this other stuff. They call it the E-Tank. Me and like the guys I hung out with, the, the, we were like the little other hoodlums I was hanging out with. We called the, my, my Ford Mustang the E-Tank. Why? Because it was forever on E. We were so broke and always trying to steal and rob to get money that the gas tank was always on E and it ran out of gas like 10 different times. We called it the E-Tank. But it would be on E for like a week. I don't know how. What it would mean? empty. Yeah, gas, that's what old gas, cars would do. That's how, would, they, that's how they got the world record for the most miles. The most miles is like, I think... 14 or 1500 on one tank and they did it with like an old And they were car. just like cruising, right? Talk uh -huh. about that. So the, the, yeah. we called it the E-Tank because literally we would drive that thing on E for like a week. It would, you know when the light comes on when your gas tank is low? We'd get like 50, 60, 70 more miles after that and we would push it till it's like put, 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 putting away and then have to try to get to a gas station or try to steal some money to go put some gas in or sell some stolen Items or something. But, or items. But before we, before we move off from If you want to know what those yeah. items are, go check out Steve Ecker. Yes, podcast. Steve Ecker podcast episode one. We talk about the details about some of that stuff. Of the so it's always... Are you again? And you are gone. Oh, wait. Let's get a quick wait, joke in wait. here. Yes, it's time for let's a joke. A, let's get a quick joke in here. Should I go hardest to easiest? Should I go hardest? Or, I mean, Come on. Let's, I don't know. Let's hear it. Or, okay. What we got? Okay. What stays on the ground... But never gets dirty. This isn't figure out of state Say it again. You were very unclear. You got to speak up. The mic is way over here. Talk louder. What stays on the stalling. ground but never gets dirty? <laughs> what yeah. stays on the ground but never gets dirty? Doesn't make any sense. Driveway, pavement, concrete. Stays on the ground. Never gets dirty. Plant. Water. Fuck. Stays on the ground. Air. A car. Cars get dirty. Clean. Um, clean. Done. Air. Fuck, man. It's. It could be anything if it's in the sun. If it can't, it doesn't show. It could be anything if it's in the sun. It doesn't. Is that a hint or is that the answer? It doesn't it's show. Only, it's only. It's a hint. Wait, hold on. I didn't. I didn't really say it correctly. That's a horrible hint. If it's in the sun. This better be figure outable. If it's, it's not in the sun, the the thing that is in the sun is not. It's not the. It's not the answer. Thing that is a horrible okay, hint. Yeah, I don't. Really Do you have know a better hint, it. Mitch? It does. It's something that your body gives off, but you can't see in the shade or in the night. Shadow. Point five. But shade. that's point two five because that was like yeah. extreme hint. So I have seven point seven five out of two. If you don't know, they ask these lame-ass jokes that are supposed to be figure outable. If I get it immediately, I get 1.5 no, points. No. If I get it with a hint, I get half point. If I get it with like extreme hints, I get 0.25 points. Okay, All right, so next before, question. Wait, before we move off of the topic of kids in school being socialized somehow, earlier we were talking about this before, the three of us. and You know how people always worry about... I know you wanted to yawn. I saw you holding it in. We will fist fight. When this camera goes off and there's no civilians around, Keep you and me on. are stepping outside. And Why outside? Because that's what you say. You want to step outside? Why not inside? I, or upstairs? Downstairs? On the balcony. Wait. So anyway. All right, so, go. Yes. We were, uh, the three of us were talking about this before. I think it was just you and me, maybe. And you know how people always think that kids in school are socialized? Then how come during class, if one kid is talking to the person beside them, then how come the teacher always says stop talking? All they do is say, be quiet, no, stop talking, settle down, be quiet. There's more of a prison. School is more of a prison. And uh, there was actually think of it as like a, a nice prison. Like... I mean, you, for not uh, like the violent criminals. School, it was a prison for like the ones who just did small crimes, like not the violent criminals. Yeah, at my old school, no, but bringing us there was a crime. 
at, at my old, old school, all the way back in your Belinda, you could, you could literally say, hey, can I go to the bathroom? And you could just get out of You could push the gate open and you could be on your way. Didn't some kid escape and climb a tree yeah. one time or something? He tried to escape no, a yeah. tree? Yeah, so, so there was this kid. And he kid. was throwing like dog shit at people or something? Or did I just make that part up? You made that part oh, up. I don't know but why. there was I don't know a kid. Why. I don't know why and naturally I think. Because I picture if some kid is so whacked out enough to escape from school and climb a fence and climb a tree, for some reason I just picture him like when the teacher come over like throwing dog shit down at them. He I don't was, know why. He was no, for, 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 one, at the for one... For one, for one kid at the old old school again, they had I think they had like the alarms set for the gates. So the kid pushed open the gate thing, and he ran. He was like I think f- three three or four miles away from the, the school at Lampo's Pizza. They called the cops and all that, and he was throwing stuff at them like rocks and dirt. That's and that's who you should be socializing with. So how could your kids ever socialize to take them out of school? Because you're in there with a bunch of whatever. We don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Everybody all right, let's keep it up. We're going to keep this rolling. No. We've only gotten, what, two questions today, technically? We need yeah, to get some more questions in. Time. We're supposed to be doing 17. I'm thirsty. Can I go get a cup of water? What the shit? We we should, I'm not, can, can I do another joke since we're short? No, water. question. We need a question. Please, oh, yeah, can question. I go get some After water? After this next question. Do you do whatever you want to do. Go ahead. Question, bitch. Who's turn for a question? It's your turn. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, right. Why does this fly in here? Next question. What was the first book you ever read? I'm going to go get some water. What was the first book you ever read? And I made up this little joke about the first book he ever read. I said it's probably the USMC history book from when he got out of the Marines because that was when he taught. Uh, he was taught how to read. Are you talking shit? Yes. Jesus. That is oh, funny! That's too loud, man. You know this microphone picked up, it'll be glaring in the people's ears. Holy shit. That was freaking funny. Not gonna lie. So. Oof. Ha! So, at least she's not yawning three times during the thing. Yeah. I, oh, I, oh I you want to talk. Was, you want to talk all this once, shit. You want to talk all this shit, but you can't handle the shit. Twice. Can't handle the shit being slung back at you. The first book, mm. you know the, the funny shit is? What? It was actually you <laughs> I'm going to ask you what, and this is to, to go into the, my point of my answer. What books are you both reading right now? What are some of the books? Just start. Okay. We've talked about some of the past. What are some of the books you're reading? First, Mitch, what are some of the books you're reading right now? Uh, let me think. You write about them Does, every single day in your debrief. Do, do audio books count? No, you can mention those too, but just what books Arena are you reading? Arena One is one of the audio books. Really good. You guys should listen to that. I'm reading Man Up because we are Man Up, which is a, 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 a business personal development book. We're using reading Man Up by Beta's Coolian for our book club. We all read a chapter a week and then we talk about it. What else are you reading? All right, Tyson, what are you reading? Since she apparently okay. doesn't know what she's reading. I'm reading I have Man Up books that I'm reading. I'm reading The Dichotomy of Leadership, which is part two of Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. And then the Third book I'm reading is After the EMP, The Hope Trilogy. It's books seven through nine of After the EMP. Yes, I read all. S- and you're listening books. to the second David Goggins book and you read yeah, the first one. So what was the first one called? Uh, Can't Hurt Me. Can't Hurt Me. She read that. And then so- I'm also reading a Bushcraft Kid. It's like about like the wilderness and all that. And then I'm also reading the Pistol Hand Manual for... The Marine for, Corps. The yeah, Marine, Corps, Marine Corps. Marine Corps is like official pistol manual. Yeah. On operating and and maintenance. What are you reading? What are some other books? You remember some other ones you're reading? Why do you get so cool? I re- I think I'm reading like half of the books in a little while. Okay, name some I, books I, you're I reading. I don't know. So you're reading the books, but you don't know any of them. That makes it that, that maybe. Well, you, I haven't read in a while. Well, there you go. There's you this one book. There strange. was this one book. Um, Lincoln. I don't know who it was written by. All right, so maybe a book about Lincoln. What about 100 Deadly Skills? I've seen you reading that. Oh, so you get a yeah. picture of you reading 100 Deadly Skills and trying the experiments in there. I some tried horse to... book I saw you reading. There, there's a ho- couple books I saw in there. Some book called Hope or something. Hope or like a one word. Hero. Hero. Hero about a dog. I read that one. I finished it. All right, That's so the these, the point is, you're asking me what books was the first book I read. The He's books that we, there. the books Close that, it, Daddy. the books that we, who cares? We need some air in here. It's hot as hell. The books that we read in school were that they make us read in school, especially once you luckily you didn't get to junior high school and high school were so dumb and useless. Like 
Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth oh. and all this like Shakespeare that they talk about like twas art thou this and that and you don't know what the fuck you don't sorry for the language on a kids show and all that but we don't know what the fuck they were saying like and then you have to interpret what they're it was just so dumb and useless you got nothing out of it and you had to like interpret it and have these useless discussions about it the only book I remember reading my entire because I wouldn't read most of the books we have the test and I would just fail the test and didn't know what the books I didn't read the book and they would give you like you had to do book reports and tests the first book that I actually for some reason because I think if I failed this test coming up on the book we had to like write a report on it or a test on it and I don't even remember the grade it is in I can't remember it somewhere in between all my school was a blur like this might have been in fourth grade it might have been in eighth grade I have no idea I think it was in elementary school maybe sixth grade but I have no good memories from school so I don't remember any of it Count of Monte Cristo. It's really like an 8,000 page book, but there, I guess there's a first school. There's like a, a, a condensed version where it's just like the main points of it. And I was, for, I had to read. If I didn't pass the test, I was going to like get left back for the year in that grade. I was going to fail and get left back in like sixth grade and have to go through sixth grade again with the fifth graders that are coming up. Like what a freaking nightmare that would be. So I read my ass off on that one book and... It was fuck. It was good. Yeah, was, we actually watched the movie. We watched a movie, and the movie of it's awesome the movie too. Was really good. Yeah. Count of Monte like Cristo. It. So many like Count lessons in it, and things place. going on about personal Chateau development Deep. and taking Chateau care Deep. of yourself and Chateau discipline Deep. and persistence and resilience well, and dealing with hardship and overcoming hardship and coming from the bottom and and building yourself back up and whatever. There's. I, I don't why was he arrested? He got screwed over by his someone that accused him of murder by his friend because his friend wanted him out of the picture because he was the one that was the more successful like one on the ship. He wanted to take his spot on the ship. He wanted to take his woman, and they ended up marrying his girlfriend. You remember all that? Because they that thought stuff. he was dead. Yeah. They thought he was dead, and he was really at this prison. And but, but such uh, I remember reading it. That, so I, I, wasn't it based off of a true story or something like that? I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure there's similar real life stories, but yeah, the but point is I that the see. stuff that they made you read in school were I can't remember a single book that I've read that I remembered except for Count of Monte Cristo. It's so weird that that's the only book that stands out. Maybe it's the only books I actually read and took serious, but all the books were so of mice and men was like all I remember about that is a guy who pet rabbits and killed all these he, he was like kind of like a Jeffrey. mentally handicapped person so he talked like funny and he'd want to pet the rabbits and he pet them he accidentally killed them all and then some woman he accident he crushed them because he was just like didn't know anybody though they're so cute and he killed a whole bunch of rabbits and then a, a woman there he liked her hair she had blonde hair and he asked if he could pet her hair and she's like no that's just weird he started petting her hair and she freaked out and he accidentally snapped her neck and and killed her like such a you i don't even know you it's the only part i remember about the book is he asked George, if he could pet the rabbits, and he killed the rabbits, then he killed some ladies, killed some lady by petting her hair. How dumb of a book is that? Like, that's <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, like, was a book about, uh, I don't even know what. I, I don't even know I've the story. I've heard of that before, but it's I It's like an a, a old school, like, romance uh, play. But. Stu like, useless. Was, that's I the point. I wanted to ask um, if it was based off of a true story, because that was, like, a long time ago, they said it was, right? Yeah, that was, like, 1800s, probably. Yeah, time so, frame. so, uh, so I guess back then a crime like murder was worse than it is down now definitely. Oh, nowadays cause they like, don't care about murder. You just yeah, because he because he, there was just so many people. They're like, oh, because he was literally sent off to some island, and the whole island is just one giant prison. And remember, they were digging for like eight years in one direction, and, and then they screwed the up wrong. the wrong direction. You say, well, we got nothing but time. That like that was like a, a lesson. Like, okay, you're this. This plan fails. And how the old guy? And how you just, the dead guy? Yeah. The, oh, the, yeah. Just how to be like resourceful and stay positive. And look, they use that time. He learned sword, sword training, knife. learned all these different languages, he learned how to like read. speak and be proper and read and all these different, like use that time wisely. Like so many, like what an awesome movie. Count of Monte Cristo, if you haven't, even the movie's good. It's like cheesy and predictable and all that, but the, the book. I'm, I'm watching it. The book was like, if you get the real version of the book, it's like a thousand something pages and it's like a little weird writing, kind of like that Shakespeare-ish kind of tone, like words that really... Or yeah, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know if I would read the whole thing. Maybe I would give it a shot reading the whole thing, see how it is, like a long, a long book. But that's the one that's the only one that stands out. And I was in like sixth grade or eighth grade or fourth grade, the no first clue, because all school is a blur. I have no good memories of it. And it was all just, yeah, so that's the first book I remember reading.
Let's get one, okay. more, one more question in. See if we can squeeze in one more before we make this too long. All right. We are extremely short on time with three minutes. No, we have a shouldn't. Oh, 330? Yeah. So good one more question. We have more, more questions. Oh, yeah. oh you did okay. it. One more. Yes. See if I could not how, give like a, I, my problem is I give like 30 minute answers. Cause I think of all you give, you give me these flashbacks. It's crazy. You asked the first book I read and I'm thinking about kind of, kind of Monte Cristo and I almost got left back and all this you're stuff. You're extending it. But the purpose is, that's the purpose of these things to learn. Like look at all the shit you're learning about me that you never knew. And these stories, I probably never once told you the story about reading the kind of Monte Cristo book and how I almost got left back and all this other stuff and all the oh, other no. dumb books we had to read. That's why the books you're reading are giving you skills that you're going to use for a lifetime. Like you're learning actual relatable, translatable skills into the real world. Instead, I didn't, that was an attempted yawn. I, you and me, fish bite, 3 p.m. Yes. after school here. After school? Go. It's That's already, the bully it's already Go. What do we got? One more question. See if I can answer it quickly. How, Stop shaking the mic. How old Control yourself. were you when you first left the house alone? Back then it was different. First, I know. first time I ever. I wish it was like that. I wasn't even allowed to cross the street when I was, because I was too, like, the, when I'm, two, I'm talking about two years old. One time I, I went outside by myself. I don't know how I got out there. Or how, two years old, we first moved to that, that house in Suffern, New York, and I crossed the street. And then since I was there, I was too afraid to cross back. And I was just sitting there crying, I remember. And some neighbor saw me like 20 minutes later and brought me back across the street. I don't know where my family was, probably, I don't know, drunk somewhere. And, they brought it back across the street. So that was the first, very, very first time. So even that, I probably never even mentioned that in my life ever till just never. now. To, to anyone, why would I have ever brought that up? The only person who knew. And that same neighbor, she was like the neighbor. daughter of the people who lived there. But one day, probably around five or six years old, I used to have to bring the, I would bring the garbage out and the garbage was stuffed. So I was smashing the top of the can to close the garbage. And this guy across the street, I'm five or six years old, says, cut it out. How would you like if I did that to your head? I'm like five or six years old, just closing the can. It was this guy's, this girl that helped me across the street, her father that lived across the street. Says that to a five or six year old. How'd you like if I did at your head? Just because I'm smashing the top of a garbage can. How do you like? Do you want to know what I did to that like, guy? What? You went and did it to him. <laughs> so you many things. Threw eggs and shaving cream in his house because of that. Like on gate night. Gate night was the night before Halloween where you would go out and just trash the neighborhood with eggs, shaving cream, toilet paper all up in the trees. You'd wrap the trees up in like hundreds of rolls of toilet paper. You'd go to the store and steal the eggs and the shaving cream couldn't pay for it. And, and, and toilet paper. So we did that. Then we'd ring around his house all the time. We'd ring, that, ring the doorbell and run and hide in the bushes. And they would come like, that was a regular thing. Like weekly, ringing around this guy's house. He was a rotten That's prick. That's what my friend was doing. Rotten prick. To some people. Then there, there was a tree on the block that had acorns. There was like one tree. It would drop thousands of acorns. They'd be all on the ground. Like if you ran past this tree, you'd wipe out like you're on marble. So everyone knew don't run past that tree. You're going to wipe out. So we would take, hand me and a bunch of other kids in the street. I don't even know Police who. And my sister's. Store. We take all these acorns at nighttime, like on the week we'd be out like late at night. And every, think, imagine four or five kids with two handfuls of acorns, throwing them at a house all at the same time. So their house, they're in their house and they just hear Brrr! all over their house and they would freak out and come outside. And then the, to, to top it all off. Did he ever know that it was you? I'm sure he did. He's so dirty. To top I it all off, this is worth it. Room. This is worth it. To top it all off. We one time ordered, we called the pizza place. Cause I used to do prank phone calls. I have a video of me prank phone calling these, oh. these companies and I'm pretending to be an adult and using these fake voices. And I called like a, a couch, a, a furniture store and complained about their couch. Cause my, my big uncle came over and he's 450 pounds Lenny and the couch collapsed. And I've talked about the cheap couch. And I wanted a refund. Like, oh, and I have these recordings somewhere on a tape somewhere. I got to find them. I re, re, prank call all these companies. So I called up the pizza place. I was good at doing voices. If and you do that, they'll track your phone. I was good at doing voices and, 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 and pretending to be like an adult and doing prank phone calls. So I called the pizza delivery place. I said, we're having a big graduation party for my, for my daughter, for whatever. She did something or they, she won the cheerleading championship or something. All her, for the whole grade is coming over. I need eight large pizza pies, a six foot hero sent over, like those massive heroes, all this food. Delivered to the house, and I delivered it to this guy's house. To his, I gave the address. They showed up with all this food to his house. Probably the people just ate it. He, they got there, and he sees all this massive, this a six foot hero, six feet did he, sandwich. Did he, did he pay for it? And stat, no, they turned away. I don't. This part I don't remember. This might just be in my head, or maybe we thought about doing. I can't remember this part because we were afraid to get caught. But then he went in the house. I think 
that we ended up getting some of that food from the guy because they had all this food now, nothing to do with it. And he just saw some kids and like gave us a pizza pie or a sandwich, something we got out of that because he had all this food now, nothing to do with it. He has to bring it back. It's going to get wasted. So I, I'm pretty sure he gave us like a pie of pizza and we just ate the whole pizza pie. Me and this one other kid, we ate like the whole pie together and just laughed about what we would do to this guy. I don't even, what was the original question? What was the first time you left the house? Well, but we are. Holy we are, shit. Uh, and that's what I went with on the first time I left the house. But back then. We're two minutes. Back then we'd ride our bikes. We'd go through the woods on our own. I'd be by myself half time with my Sit dog. I'd go miles away. With, with. Uh, I got arrested for being on a railroad track and dropping rocks. It was only like five, six feet above the cars. Like it's like a 10 foot bridge, a real low bridge. I had a, some melted chocolate. We would drop on the windshields of the cars, the red light, and it would like smear down the windshield. Then we ran out of chocolate. So I dropped like rocks in the back of someone's like bed of someone's truck. And this guy snuck around while I'm ready to drop another one and freaking said, Hey, get over here and ran and grabbed two of us and held us there and called the cops. And they took us to the police station when we were like eight, nine years old. And then this wow. kid, they released me from the police station. The kid that I was with, he was like two years younger than me. I lived on the street, I called him red. His nickname was red. He had red hair. His father, came to pick us up from the police station. They released me just as some, some guy, because I was with the kid, his father. They didn't even call, my parents never knew about it. Back then it was like, whatever, just get out of here, kid. Go with home with this kid. They didn't even know if I even knew the guy or whatever, where he was taken. It was a different time back then. No, in, the internet didn't exist. There was, cable TV was barely just starting. We didn't have cable TV. It was like, we were just out there having fun, causing trouble, climbing trees, starting fires. We started a, a small forest fire one time on accident. Like, you we can get all the clothes on other shows. You, you, gotta go. you said you'd wander off into the forest with your dog. Was that with Major or Dempsey? Dempsey. Dempsey. She would follow you or did you have her own she leash? Needed, she wasn't that well trained. She needed a leash. Sometimes she'd be okay without a leash, but she needed a leash. Nothing like Tyson dog. All right. I think we need to wrap this up. Yes. Jesus, we only got like three questions in, but those three questions turned into about 17 questions. So. Four. Okay. But the point is, have these type of conversations with your kids. Let them come up with questions. Let them lead to like, how much are you two learning about me? And we're talking yeah. and hearing about this That's stuff. Hard. Like, these are awesome conversations to learn about. What you doing over there, kid? What the Gamer bubs. So, let's take us home. Kid, could you smash that subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube? Click that notifications bell. And, and if you're also if you're on YouTube, check out Freak Fit. Yes. Check out my YouTube channel and Freak soon Fit. We're going to have a gaming channel. And soon we're also going to have a gaming channel that you can also check that out called Gamer Bubs. So that sounds real interesting. Sounds real great. I'm Lamer also, Gamer Bub. He's Famer Gamer Bub. We only got to part two of this, so we're going to yes. extend this into future episodes, right? So, um, yes, we're going days. to extend this into future episodes. Anything we got we seven, seven questions down, ten to go. This has been Breaking the Cycle like Pod Podcast, episode, episode number, number two. two. In case someone told you today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses. Anything you two freaks want to take them home with? No excuses! Very, very, very normal children. I can't imagine where you get it from. We will see you next time. Go like, subscribe, share, and have these type of conversations with your kids. The 17 things your kids are dying to know about their parents. No excuses. So let me break, break, break it all down for you I ain't never giving up, I ain't never giving up You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you I ain't worried about you, I ain't never giving up So let me break, break, break it all down for you I ain't never giving up, I ain't never giving up You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you